high than flying to the land. Praise God, I am covered by the blood of the land. Oh, now I'm so glad what the Lord has done for me. By His grace, I've been forgiven. His blood has rescued me. So I walk and drive and fly into the land. Praise God, beyond doubt, I'm covered by the blood. Jesus got to go. For oh, we are living in the healing flow. The power of sin is broken. We are not saved by the Savior says. Praise God, we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. I said sicknesses and diseases got to go. Is broken, we are saved by the Savior. Says, Praise God because we are covered by the blood of Jesus. Say, I am I'm covered, 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 covered by His blood. Walking by faith, by faith. we are living in love. Living in love. Yes, we are. Blood, We're covered. covered. I am covered, covered, covered by His blood. Yes, Jesus. Jesus has rescued me. Oh, you are. Walking by faith, living in love. Yes, oh, I am I'm covered, 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 covered by We call in His name, say, Jesus, He will rescue you today by the power of His Lord, say, Yes, He has come to deliver and to set us free. He's my rescuer, restorer. to heaven and let's begin to give glory to God. Let's begin to appreciate him this morning for the privilege and the blessing of being in his presence. Let's celebrate him from the depth of our hearts. He's worthy of all the praise, worthy of all the glory, worthy of all the honor and worthy of all the adoration. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all praise. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Appreciate him for the privilege and the blessing of standing in his presence again this morning will you celebrate the faithfulness of our god is worthy of all the praise father we say thank you we bless your holy name you are worthy of all praise you are worthy of all glory you are worthy of all honor now begin to ask him to speak to you today he has called this our breaking generation across his service lord i've come here today for an encounter that will establish my liberty an encounter that will establish my liberty will you speak to him right now from the depth of your heart one word from god is sufficient to establish a change of story one word from god is sufficient to establish a change of story
Father, we say thank you. We bless your holy name. You are worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, this morning our eyes are upon you. We thank you for the blessing of being in your presence. Thank you for your goodness towards us all. And Lord, you have brought us today into your presence. According to your word, let every cause be broken in every life. Let each one of us depart here with a tangible testimony. We give you all the praise and the glory for it. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And somebody believe, say loud, amen. Give Jesus a big, big hand, everybody. And please, you may be seated in his presence welcome to 2021 your year of supernatural turnaround that shall be your experience in the name of the lord jesus christ somebody believe it say loud amen for our sunday services in this month we shall be examining the subject gateways to financial fortune gateways to financial fortune and this service today is a covenant day of breaking generational causes therefore every cause that is manifesting in any life shall be broken today in the name of Jesus <laughs> gateways to financial fortune God have made this statement in one of the earlier services today that we can pray for God to show us how to prosper, but we don't pray to prosper. In Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 17, the Bible makes it very clear to us there. He said, I'm the Lord your God that teacheth thee to profit, that leadeth thee in the way that thou shouldest go. Prosperity is not a prayer subject. It is a product of covenant application. It is discovering and applying the covenant that brings any man or woman into realms of prosperity. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, the Bible says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto your fathers as it is this day so it is a product of covenant discovery and application and therefore it becomes important that we re, re, re examine what a covenant is so we begin this morning by answering the question what is a covenant and we look at god's word to look at scriptural definition of the covenant in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, look at what the scripture shows us. It says, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. He said, God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it by an oath so that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us so a covenant is not a promise if you look at this scripture very closely it tells us there look at it again verse 17 in particular it tells us there, it said, God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel. So, a covenant goes beyond a promise. So, what is a covenant? A covenant can simply be defined as a deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath for delivery. A deal enacted by God based on well-defined terms and sealed with an oath for delivery. That is a covenant. 
In other words, when you talk about a covenant, it goes beyond a promise. It is a provision made by God based on conditions to be met by man, by man sealed with an oath that is made by God. A provision made by God that is that has conditions to be met by men and yet sealed by an oath made by God. That is why the Bible says in Psalm 89 and verse 34, it said that my covenant will I not break, neither will I alter the thing that is gone forth out of my lips. So in a covenant, God has conditions that he has made for you and I to meet. And when the condition is met, God is bound by an oath to deliver what he has said. And this is what a covenant simply is. The Bible tells us how strong a covenant is in the book of Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 20 and verse 21. Look at what it says. Jeremiah 33, verse 20 and 21. It said, Thus said the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season. He said in verse 21, Then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant. In other words, what is keeping day and night is a covenant. So it is the same force keeping day and night that God has given to you and me concerning his provisions for us. And you and I can both testify from the time of our birth till now. There is no day that the day forgot to report. There was no night that the night forgot to show. Every time as clockwork, you see day reporting. You see night showing up. You see day reporting. You see night showing up. God said it is the same force that is keeping it in place. In Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, He upholded all things by the word of his power. So there is a covenant force that is upholding all things. The earth is being suspended by covenant. If you see a picture of the earth that is taken from space, you will discover that the earth is not standing on any other thing. It looks like it is floating. What is holding the earth up is the covenant of God. If you look at the sun, there is no hunger that is holding it up. It looks as if suspended. What is holding the sun is the covenant of God. The moon has never jammed the earth before. Because the covenant of God is holding it in place. No star has crashed. You have never heard before that, oh, there was an accident in the, in, the, in the atmosphere. Because the covenant is keeping it in place. God said the same force holding it is what I have holding my provision for you. So if you meet the terms, you can be sure of the outcome of the covenant. For somebody here, I see the covenant projecting you into realms of supernatural fortune if you believe it say louder amen i said if you believe it say louder amen so it means therefore that when it comes to divine fortune supernatural fortune that god has provided for you and i what we must do is to uncover the terms of the covenant and align with those terms and as we do so we begin to see the covenant speak on our behalf supernaturally my prayer is that for each one of us in this month your eyes will be open afresh to the details of this covenant and as you engage with the details, I see the covenant decorating and distinguishing you. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. So what are the terms of the covenant of financial fortune? What are the terms of this covenant of financial fortune? Number one, the covenant root of financial fortune is serving God and the interests of his kingdom with one's financial resources that is the covenant root of financial fortune is serving god and the interest of his kingdom with one's financial resources in zechariah chapter 1 and verse 17 the bible tells us there that my cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad so god's intention is to spread his kingdom by the prosperity that you'll be unleashing in these end times. What that therefore means is that God is seeking for kingdom custodians. 
men and women who will become treasure chests for the advancement of the kingdom. Please hear this and hear it very well this morning. God is not depending on what you have. God is seeking to give you what he has. Make no mistake about it. God is not depending on what you have. God is seeking to give you what he has. The scripture says that the cattle upon a thousand hills, they belong to me. In Haggai chapter 2, we are told there God speaking very clearly from verse 6 down to verse 9. Look at what it says there. It says, don't say the Lord, yet once it is a little while, I will shake the heavens. I will shake the earth. I will shake the sea. I will shake the dry land. And the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, said the Lord. It's not waiting for you or for me. What is it? Verse 8. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, said the Lord. God is not looking for what you have. He's seeking to give you what he has. He's seeking to give you what he has. And to receive what he has, there is a covenant dimension that you must position yourself in. And that is you must become addicted to the advancement of the kingdom with your resources. Addicted to the advancement of the kingdom with your resources. Please take note of this and take note, of this, take note of this very, very clearly this morning. You see, riches in the kingdom are entrusted. It is a product of entrustment. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 11, the Bible says, If you are unfaithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? So true riches are entrusted. What that means is that until God finds you and I as being faithful with what he has put in our hands, we cannot secure what he has in his hands for us. It is being faithful in advancing the kingdom of God, taking advantage of opportunities that show themselves up around us. That's what positions you and I to become custodians of this end time wealth. Shout hallelujah. And that is why you discover that in this kingdom, you don't prosper by being a consumer. You prosper by being a distributor. It is commitment to distribution that produces supernatural prosperity in this kingdom. In Proverbs 11 and verse 24 and 25, the Bible tells us there, it says, There is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. And there is he that withholdeth more than his meat, and yet it tended to poverty. It says in verse 25, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that watereth shall also be watered himself. So it takes kingdom liberality to taste divine prosperity. Kingdom liberality. When you hold your fist tight, refusing to be a giver, you generate heat in finances have you taken note that the tighter you hold your fist if you hold your fist right now you take your right hand now hold it very tight the tighter you hold your fist the moment you release it and put it on your face you will discover that your hand is hot the moment your fist is tight in giving your life becomes tight in finances there is heat generated but when your hands are open there is continuous access to receive. No closed hand can receive. It takes an open hand to receive. That is why it is givers that end up as receivers. If you are not committed in kingdom liberality, you are not a candidate for kingdom prosperity. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. There is this story of a monkey and a hunter had put a hole in a coconut and put some food inside that coconut because he wanted to catch the monkey. And the monkey went and put his hand into the coconut and grabbed the food. And that coconut was tied by a rope. And then when he tried to pull out, his hand was too big to come out. But the monkey remained there, 
holding what was inside the coconut, refusing to let go. The only way for that monkey to experience liberty was to release what was inside. But because he refused to release what was inside, he stayed there till the hunter came. And the hunter met the monkey, holding on to what was inside the coconut, refusing to let go. Even when the hunter came and was going to kill it, he still held what was inside. Because he will die with what is in his hand. And the monkey eventually was killed by the hunter. Because what was in his hand, he did not let go. You see, many people's financial debt is tied to their financial tightness. They hold what they have so tightly. And like God, some of our father said, if you eat today, no matter how sweet the food is, you must contribute to the earth by going to the toilet. If you do not do that, because you said the food is too sweet, you won't let go. You eat tomorrow again, it's sweeter than yesterday's own, you won't let go. You eat the next day, by the third day, your eyes will begin to move from side to side. And you start seeing things that are not really there, because the end is near. You refuse to let go what entered into you. Is somebody getting it now? There are many today that are victims of financial constipation. They have collected from God, but they have held it tight. So their stomach is beginning to swell and there is a limit to which you can contain. After a while, either you go for medical attention or you discover that your, your end comes because you refuse to let go. Many people's financial end came because they refuse to let go. Please hear this and hear it very well. The future is tied to what you do with what God has put in your hand in the present. Look at what the Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9 and verse 10. It said, it said, He that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruit of your righteousness. So everything that God has given to you, inside it there is a seed. There is something for the advancement of the kingdom. I want you to liken it to a tuba of yam. You know, a tuba of yam, at the end of the yam is the seed of the yam, true or false. But you can eat the yam from start to finish. When you finish the tuba, you have eaten the future. If you cut the end of the yam and plant it, you have created the future. God gives you resources to test you, to see whether you will create a future by advancing his kingdom. You are hearing of building of rural churches. What is it that you are, what is it that you are doing with that, with that provision? What is it that you are doing with that opportunity? Please hear this. Kingdom life is about taking advantage of opportunities. It's about taking advantage of opportunities. You and I belong to a commission where you are never going to be under pressure. You are the one who will decide where you dive in by reason of opportunity. Is somebody getting it now? Rural churches are being built everywhere today. Not one person is under pressure. God does not need what you have. You are the one that needs the opportunity he gives. That's why when an opportunity comes, you dive in. No bothering about who is around you. You discover the man at the beautiful, at, at, at the pool of Siloam. The Bible said that this man, he, was, he stood there every single day. And when Jesus asked, why are you here? He said, ah, he said, before I enter in, somebody else has dived in. That's how the kingdom life is, up, is, 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 is lived. You find an opportunity come up, you dive into it. Taking advantage of it. And as you do so, you begin to see God decorating you supernaturally. You may not be able to build a rural church today, but you can do something somewhere. You can buy chairs in your zone. You can do something. At every level to which God has blessed you, there's an opportunity you can take advantage of. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Somebody was praying one day and he said, Lord, just test me with money. Just test me with money and you will see what I will do. And somebody heard him and told him, sir, he's already testing you with money. The one that you have now, what are you doing with it? What opportunities are you taking advantage of? Is there not one convert that you can assist with a pair, with a, you know, the clothes that you have? Is there not a convert you can assist with transportation to church? Taking advantage of opportunities is what advances you and I financially. I see grace coming upon each one of us for this in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. Number two, 
Tithing is the key to a world of financial fortune. Tithing is the key to a world of financial fortune. Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and verse 11 in particular, it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Prove me now. I like that word that is written there, now. Because it means that every time you are engaging in tithing, you are proving God. And God said, when you do that, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not be able to, 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 to contain. So this life of abundance requires our engagement of this covenant of tithing. And not only is the blessing poured out, but verse 11, he said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. That is, there is nothing consuming your resources. I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So in tithing, we have the heavens open over us and the devourer rebuked on our behalf. That's what occurs. As we engage that covenant of tithing, we position ourselves to experience supernatural abundance. In chapter 4 of that book of Malachi, verse 1 and verse 2, the Bible tells us there, it says, Behold, the day comes when the earth will burn like an oven, and all the proud and they that do wickedly shall be as stubble. The day that comes will burn them up, and it will not leave them with root nor branch. He said, However, those that fear my name, he said, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings, and while others are burning up and going down, they will be going forth and growing up as cows in the stall. They are under a covenant canopy so they cannot feel the heat. For somebody, I see that becoming your own experience. That means no matter what is happening in the environment, other people are making losses. You are enjoying supernatural advancement. You are enjoying gains. You are enjoying plenty in the time of penury. I see that becoming somebody's experience here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say louder, amen. amen. I say, you believe it, say louder, amen. amen. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. amen. So tithing, number three, is our worship offering. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16 and 17, the Bible tells us when we appear before the Lord, it said we are not to appear empty. We come to worship the Lord with our resources hear this and hear it very well if you don't worship god with your resources you will end up worshiping your resources if you don't worship god with your resources you will end up worshiping your resources when you find a man that will not worship god with what he has then what he has already has him the bible says you cannot serve god and mammon we must understand that part of our worship is the presentation of our offerings before him we worship him with our offerings we come before him to honor him with our offerings and when we do that what what takes place first samuel 2 and verse, and verse 30 he that honors me i will honor and he that despises me i will lightly esteem so when you honor god with your resources he bestows his own resources on you the true riches begin to find expression in your own life. Somebody believe you say loud amen. I said somebody believe you say loud amen. If you look at the book of Philippians chapter 4, we are told in verse 19, he said, my God shall supply your need according to his riches. So there's a supply chain from heaven that comes in your direction and it is in response to our engagement of worship before the Lord. My prayer for each one of us is that from this day onward, giving will become a delight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said giving will become a delight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving will become a delight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You believe it, say loud amen. What are some of the fringe benefits as we engage in covenant practice? Number one, it averts causes. Every cause hanging on any department of your life is broken today in the name of Jesus. 
Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22, we are told there, after the curse came upon the earth and the earth was overrun by the flood, Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 22, he said, the Lord smelt a sweet savour in heaven and said, I will no longer curse the ground for man's sake. By reason of that sacrifice presented to God, the curse was averted. Every curse hanging in any life today shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Number two is it guarantees divine protection. Psalm 20 verse 1 to 3. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary. Strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy bond sacrifice. So when we go giving, when we go advancing the kingdom with our resources, when we go sacrificing, what happens is that there is a memorial for us against the day of trouble. So there is a seal of protection against the assault of the enemy. From today, the enemy will no longer have a free ride around you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number three, it procures favor. It procures favor. Engaging with covenant practice brings about favor. Psalm chapter 35 and verse 27. The Bible tells us there, it says, Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, Let the Lord be magnified which takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. When you favor his cause, what happens to you? In Psalm chapter 102, verse 13 down to verse 15, the Bible says, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Why? He said, Thy servants take pleasure in the stones of Zion and favor the dust thereof. When you favor kingdom causes, you enjoy favor from God. I see divine favor decorating you from this time onward. In the name of Jesus Christ. And number four, guarantee supernatural fruitfulness. Guarantee supernatural fruitfulness. In Genesis 18 verse 1 to 10, we find there Abraham standing before the tent and guests were passing by and he called them in and began to demonstrate liberality. And the barrenness of Abraham and Sarah was broken on the spot. By liberality, they entered into fruitfulness. Every barren department of your life from this season onward, it is overturned for fruitfulness. As you engage the terms of this covenant, every area of your life shall become fruitful. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Fruitfulness of the body, fruitfulness of your life, fruitfulness of your business, fruitfulness of your career, all round fruitfulness shall become your portion from now. It's important that we are now recognize that for us to enjoy all of these things, we must engage the details of this covenant as shown to us from scriptures. And I believe God that from this day onward, as we receive grace to put this to work, we shall begin to enjoy supernatural blessings in every department of our lives. You believe we say loud, amen. Lift your hand to heaven and give glory to God for his word that you have received this morning. Father, thank you for your word that has come my way. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Today is our covenant day of breaking generational causes. And I know that via the encounter you are having here today, every cause that is manifesting in any department of your life, Today is the expiry date for it. Yeah. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. Yeah. From scripture, we are meant to see that causes are often generational in nature. Causes are often generational in nature. The Bible tells us in the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 down to verse 5, we are told there very clearly he said, thou shalt have no other God before me. Verse 4. It says, thou shalt, make, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image 
of or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth look at verse 5 he says thou shalt not bow thyself to them nor serve them for i the lord thy god am a jealous god visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me so there are there are particular causes that that have the ability of lasting three to four generations that's why causes can be generational you hear of all manner of sieges put upon the lives of people marital spells that have lasted over years from generation to generation spells of stagnation spells of limitation spells of frustration even spells of death from generation to generation but the good news is this that even though causes can be generational causes are reversible and every cause that is upon any life shall be reversed here today in the name of jesus i said every cause that is upon any life shall be reversed today in the name of jesus Causes are reversible. Causes are reversible. I don't know how long that cause may have been. But today you are upon Mount Zion where there shall be deliverance. I see that cause broken in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe it, say loud amen. But how do we position ourselves to experience liberty from the causes of life? Number one, you must understand that it is when one is saved and remains so that he can be delivered from all causes. When one is saved and remains so, that is when he can be delivered from all causes. The Bible makes us to understand in the book of John chapter 3 and verse 3 concerning salvation. It says, uh, except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god so the starting point is being born again in hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation so it takes salvation for anyone to experience escape from the causes of life in the book of Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14, the Bible tells us there, it said, Christ hath redeemed us. Who are the us there? Those who are born again. From the cause of the law. Being made a cause for us. For it is written, Cause is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham may come upon the Gentiles. So there is, there is a provision in redemption to rescue you and I from the causes of life. In fact, we are told in the book of Colossians 2 and verse 14. Look at this very closely. Colossians 2 and verse 14. It says, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So by salvation, whatever was written or recorded against you, there are records that you are not aware of. But by salvation, whatever that record is, he said he blotted it away and nailed it to his cross. He took it away. So salvation is your escape from the causes of life. I don't know what causes may have been ravaging any department of your life. But by reason of the price of redemption, your rescue is established today. Somebody believe you say louder, amen. I said, somebody believe you say louder, amen. That's why we're told in 2 Corinthians 5 17 if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, old experiences are passed away. Old limitations are passed away. Old bondages are passed away. Old chains are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. 
So when a man becomes born again, he escapes the clutches of the causes of life. He escapes the clutches of the causes of life. That is what salvation comes to offer to you. Shout hallelujah. That is what salvation comes to offer to you. So you discover that whenever you find causes still trying to play tricks on you, it is the enemy seeking to manipulate you out of what belongs to you. In Christ, you are set free. In Christ, the chains are broken. In Christ, the prison is open. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Acts 26 and verse 18, the Bible says, <laughs> to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified, to turn them from darkness to light, to take them from captivity to liberty, to take them from causes to blessing. That's what Jesus came to do for you and for me. And that's why I know that today, everything that looks like a curse upon any department of your life, today marks the end of it forever. Somebody believe it, say loud, amen. I said, somebody believe it, say loud, amen. But it's not enough to be born again. You must stay saved. Remain so. Don't go into Christ and come out of him. Remain so. Shout hallelujah. Remain in him. Stay rooted in him. Stay planted in him. That's the only way to enjoy the blessings that have been provided for in Christ. Remain in him. Don't be one leg in, one leg out. Remain committed to Christ. It is in Christ that you can have the crisis of life broken. Shout hallelujah. Today I see grace coming upon each one of us for this in the name of Jesus. I said I see grace coming upon each one of us for this in the name of Jesus. I see grace coming upon each one of us for this in the name of Jesus. Now it's important for us to understand secondly, that while salvation secures believers from causes, serving God and the interests of his kingdom is what sustains us under the blessings. You are rescued from the causes by salvation, but you are registered under the reign of his blessing by serving him. The Bible makes us to understand very clearly in the book of Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26. He said, you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and will take sickness away from the midst of thee. He says, thou shalt not, there shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. You register under the reign of his blessing by serving his interest and the advancement of his kingdom. That's what positions you to keep enjoying blessings. So you break the course by salvation. But you enjoy the blessing by stewardship. Advancing his kingdom is the key. The Bible tells us in the book of Psalm chapter 34 and verse 10. Psalm 34 and verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want or look for any good thing. Why would they not look for any good thing? Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these good things that others are running after shall be added unto you. They will not look for it because they are seeking him. When you are in pursuit of God, it is only good things that are in pursuit of you. Shout hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. From this time onward, evil will never pursue after you again. You believe it? Say it loud, amen. I said evil will never pursue after you again. In the name of Jesus Christ. What God is showing to us is very simple this morning. That if you are now going to escape the clutches of the causes of life, we must first of all ensure that we are saved and remain so. And second, that we are committed to serving him. When that is the case, you will live a life of continuous blessings. Therefore, today expect to see the end of every cause upon any department of your life. 
by the time you are emerging from this service today, every trace of causes is totally broken over you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hand to heaven and give glory to God this morning for his word that you have received. Thank him from the depth of your heart. Jesus, we say thank you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Somebody believe, say loud, amen. amen. Before we go any further this morning, if you are here, you are not yet born again, you have not yet surrendered your life to Jesus, you have not made him the Lord and the Savior of your life, I want to give you an opportunity. Wherever you are right now, remember, until you are saved, you are not safe. The causes of life keep ravaging in different departments of the lives of people until they come into Christ. Wherever you are, you want to come into Christ today. You want to become a child of God. You want to become born again. Quickly rise on your feet now. I want to pray with you. All over this place. Don't let anything hold you back. Take a decision. Take your life in your hand. Because right now, Jesus is set to save you. Quickly rise on your feet. Are you clapping for Jesus, people of God? He's saving, delivering, and setting free. Glory to Jesus. Also, there are those who are here who need to rededicate their lives to Christ. Something has gone wrong somewhere. You have missed it along the way. You have disconnected from him. And as a result of that, all the things that were ravaging you before have come back. But Jesus is saying, my arms are open to receive you if you will come to me. If you want to rededicate your life to Jesus right now, I want you to quickly rise on your feet also. I want to pray with you. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Quickly rise on your feet right now. Jesus is knocking the door of your heart to save and to deliver. Thank you, Jesus. Now, please, at this moment, for those in both categories, suspend filling your form right now and just lift up your right hand before God and pray this prayer after me with faith in your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud and clear, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I am a sinner. I cannot help myself. But I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again. Just to save me. Jesus, come into my life. As my Lord and Savior. Take control of me. From this day forward. I will follow you. No turning back. I will serve you. No turning back. Thank you Lord. For saving me. In Jesus name. Amen. Keep your hand lifted. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these precious ones that you have rescued today. Grant them grace to keep following you all the days of their lives and never ever turn back. Thank you, Father, for it. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Congratulations. It's a brand new day for you. Please complete your forms and submit it to the official closest to you. Don't forget, we have a foundation class that takes place every Monday. It takes place tomorrow and the upper Monday. You attend just two Mondays and you have a wonderful foundation for a glorious walk with the Lord. The out outreach office will reach you with an SMS to tell you the place that is closest to you. Please take advantage of it and you shall be blessed. Once again, congratulations. Shall we rise on our feet, everybody, and give Jesus a big, big hand of praise as we receive our Father. Make it bigger for him. Hallelujah. If you have been blessed, give Jesus a bigger clap of praise. Amen. All crosses operate in the realm of darkness. And when light comes through, darkness leaves you alone. By redemption, Crosses are illegal in your life. <laughs> the hold of crosses was broken on the cross. It means that they expired when Jesus hung on that cross. So whatever may be holding down anyone's life in any form 
is declared over finally today. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. You are walking from this service absolutely, totally cause free. Amen. Whatever those causes have held down, they are finally released today. As a family where no one got married, 37 years, those who had children here and there among their women, no marriage. When the course was broken, 11 precious innocent people that were held down by the devil got married in one year. Whatever negative thing has followed some trend in anyone's family, today, God is averting that plague and cause forever. In the name of Jesus. Someone lost four of his siblings, one after another, to a particular plague. And then now, he also started covering blood and he knew he was in essence line. He ran to Jesus in this place and he had me share about so when in 2005 and plugged into it, he gave his testimony in 2015 for 10 years. Not one person died in that family. It was an annual event. In fact, they asked him, is it only better they do in your family? It was that bad. But Jesus terminated it as light came.